Let's talk about better ways to handle and track errors in your JavaScript, including using a couple tools that are completely free. What's up everyone, my name is James Hugh Quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics and a lot specifically focused on JavaScript. But I think one of the things that's missed in a lot of tutorials is how to actually handle and track errors in JavaScript. Most of the tutorials that you see focus on best case scenario and we kind of forget to cover some of the ins and outs of how to handle stuff, especially after we deploy to production. So I'm gonna walk through a series of tips and a couple tools that will help you do all that stuff better and kind of show you how I've incorporated these tools into, into the front end and the back end for the Learn, Build, Teach Discord. So we have a Discord bot and then we have a uh, front end project. The Discord bot is a Node.js and Express app. The front end project for the website is a SvelteKit application. All the source code for that, you can check in the link below uh, under the Learn, Build, Teach uh, group project, whatever it's called on, uh, on GitHub. Now this video is sponsored by highlight.io, the open source full stack monitoring framework, which comes with session replay, air monitoring, logging, self-hosting, et cetera. It's pretty sweet and it's free. And I'll show you how I incorporated this into the learn, build, teach front end and back end in a little bit in the video. But first let's start with some uh, basics on the logging side. So one key thing that I think is worth calling out here is logging is more than just console.log. We probably, maybe you know that, maybe you don't, but a lot of what we see is just people using console.log all over the place. And so it's important to note that there's other functions on the console object that you can use. So including console info, debug, warn, and error. Now I specifically mentioned these because logging is an important part of being able to debug applications after they're deployed to production. So if something goes wrong, you wanna have a log statement, a, tra a trace of those logs of what actually happened. So using those specific functions intentionally actually helps the debugging process. So using console error specifically for errors, using info for things that you just kinda wanna know about but are not necessarily errors, using these appropriately and intentionally makes it a lot easier to filter through logs in the end. I'll show you a couple different ways that I do that here in a minute. But it makes it easier for you to be able to debug things by knowing exactly uh, what happened and how to search by specifically errors or info statements or whatever. So the first thing I'd recommend is just use the different methods associated with console, including console.log, info, error, trace, and warn. Now on the logging side, most of your providers or hosts that you may deploy a front end or a back end to will have some sort of log tracking visibility built into it. So the uh, Learn, Build, Teach Discord bot, the back end for this is hosted on Heroku. I was already paying for a free tier before they got rid of the, or I was already paying for a tier beyond the free tier before they actually got rid of the free tier. So I still use this. But inside of here, they have a little dashboard here for viewing logs. Now this is great just to go and like spot check something. If you happen to know that something just happened, you could go and see in here. You could follow with auto scroll. But I can tell you this is not the ideal way to, uh, to look at logs. Now, one thing you could do is let me pull open uh, the source code for the Learn, Build, Teach Discord bot. You could do something like uh, uh, use the Heroku CLI. So you could do a Heroku logs and then uh, tail if I spell, spell, if I spell this correctly. So this will run a tail if you're familiar with this in Linux, for example, of just like following the logs as they're coming out. So if I were to trigger a log in here by doing something in Discord, you'd actually see this and it would kind of maintain that live refresh. So that's kind of cool. And then one of the other things that is helpful is Heroku logs last hundred logs or something is kind of choosing to say, I want to see all the previous X number of logs. And it looks like you can do that with the N. Uh, so let's actually try this uh, Heroku logs dash N 1500. This will show you the last 1500 logs and you could go and scroll all through these. It's not very searchable. You could also uh, kind of write these too. I think you could write this to uh, like logs.txt if you did the, the um, greater than symbol. I think that's how that works. I haven't done this in a long time. Let's actually see if that worked. So let's open up log.txt. I think this did work. And so if you generate a text file, then you could open it up in VS Code and you could search through that. Again, still not like the best way to do this, although this is something that you can do. So one of the things that I did inside of Heroku, if we go back to the Heroku dashboard, 
and go to overview and somewhere in here I have uh, add-ons. So I installed Logtail as a, as a free add-on to, uh, to Heroku. And so if I open up uh, Logtail, this is log management reimagined for 2023, whatever. It has searchability for logs and it's actually pretty nice. So if I go into the dashboard here, you can see that I have uh, all the logs showing. This is for the last three hours. I could go uh, now minus 24 hours to now, which is basically the last 24 hours. So it's a completely searchable one based on date, based on like type of logs that you're looking for. This is taking, it doesn't usually take that long, I don't think. Um, but you can do a lot of things in here for searching for logs in a much easier way than downloading logs yourself from Heroku and then going in through and searching as well. So this is a free one that I've used. This has been pretty nice for me. Uh, I go in here and, and use this a lot. Now, if you're deploying something uh, like more front endy and it has like serverless functions, you'll usually see those logs in Netlify or Vercel or something. So I have a dashboard that you can view those as well. But exporting your logs to something else actually is pretty, uh, pretty helpful. Now, one of the things that's interesting uh, that I actually just learned in, uh, let's go back to a, a sample project here, is if you're using Node and Express, uh, I would have thought that Express handles errors or catches errors automatically. So what I mean is inside of this API endpoint, why throw an error? I actually expect Node to catch, catch that. And in this first case, it does. So let's actually run this node uh, app.js. And this is listening on port 3000. Let's open up local host 3000. This is going to trigger a error, but it's actually still running. So Node is able to catch and handle this thing automatically. Whereas if I have an async function like this, so this is going to be at the endpoint slash async. So let's go to slash async. This is actually going to kill the entire thing because Node Express by default has no way of knowing when you throw errors uh, on an async callback function, which if we look inside of, let's say routes, and shares, for example, just to show you some example routes that I have in my repo, all of these are async, 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 etc. I would venture to guess that most of your API endpoints across the board are doing some sort of database interaction, probably, which is going to make them async. So it's interesting to note or important to note that um, if you have this inside of an async function, it's not going to catch that error automatically. What you could do is then surround this with a try catch. So if we surround this with a try catch in here, this throws an error, it triggers the try catch. Uh, you can actually call the uh, next, I think, how does this work? Let me actually go back because there is a, um, not this one, but this one. So this is talking about the fact, uh, everything that we just talked about where it doesn't work. The next is just gonna uh, send this thing down the line. So now to the next handler. So in this case, we could handle this by calling next and then passing in that error. So this is saying like, hey, let this go ahead and continue to propagate down through the chain inside of Express. So let's run this app one more time. And this should actually get us back to uh, something that will at least work. So at least it's handling this thing. So we're able to forward this error on so it handles that automatically, but we catch the initial one uh, because it's an async function, it wasn't going to catch that uh, by default. Now you want to use try catch to handle any errors anyway. And if you look inside of all of this code, anything that does uh, something of value that could throw an error, it's surrounded with a try catch. So with Node Express in particular, you want to make sure that you're catching your errors regardless, but especially if it's inside of an async callback, it's not going to catch and handle that yourself. Uh, it's going to actually kill your entire application. So you need to actually handle that manually. So those are a few different tips for uh, handling and tracking your errors, specifically with logging. And now I want to get into uh, the sponsor and I'm going to show you uh, how we incorporated this into uh, into the Learn, Build, Teach front end and back end. But this is with Highlight. And one of the things that I think is right off the bat most impressive is session uh, session replay. So this means like here's a session that someone has had on the site. I can actually play through this and see what they did on the site. So I can see where their cursor is. I can see where they go. They actually went to the Spanish version of this. That's actually really cool. Um, and you can see they click on or they look at clicking on the Discord link, then they go to the content page. This sort of information 
is crazy valuable. So this is just like session replay in here where I can just see what they do. This is great for like UI UX research and then just kind of seeing how people interact with it. But really, really cool stuff that people can do this. This is actually me going through in the admin dashboard and approving the different articles that we then uh, use to share. So there's nothing private in here, just me like approving these from an admin perspective. But that's really cool. But the, the beauty of this comes with like connecting that to an error. And the real beauty of the of this connects like front end and back end. So tracking errors on the front end is great. Like, but a lot of times what's happening is your front end is calling your back end and you want to have that full thing actually connected. So if I come into the errors tab, this is something we did when testing where we kind of forced an error just to, to demo this inside of highlight. And inside of here, you see it through an error on the front end. And so what it does, it actually shows you like specific line in the front end where this happened. So originally when this error was thrown, if we come to the server uh, insights route in here, this is making a fetch request to my backend that's hosted on Heroku. And it's assuming that it's gonna get back uh, data in a JSON format that it can convert to JSON. And actually the, the issue with that is if there was an error that happened on the server, the res.json wouldn't work. And actually I just realized this code should actually be up here. So you should check the status of that first. There's one tip as well if you're using fetch. It doesn't throw an error, it just returns back a status that represents an error and you have to check that. So I actually found this bug through seeing this inside of the highlight dashboard. But in this case, it's calling the back end. And because of that, uh, we actually see an error on the front end. So this is the front end error. And then because we have that session uh, or we have highlight registered in the front end and back end, it's sending session information to the back end to where now this back end error is related to this as well. So if we were to scroll down, uh, I need to upload some uh, source maps for this code, but you can see that it actually triggered an error in the back end. So the fact that you can like see session replays and then see what people were doing when they experienced an error and then track an error all the way to the back end, really, really cool stuff. And then for me, uh, this is a, a relatively new feature of Highlight is there's a logs tab. In this case, I don't really have much to show, but I can now incorporate kind of what I was using Logtail for to have searchability of my logs and have them all be aggregated right here. So since I already have Highlight incorporated into my application, I don't really have to do anything extra for it to then uh, show me all the logs that I end up running in my application inside of this dashboard and be able to search and query and all those different things. They also have the ability to configure alerts if you hit certain thresholds and send yourself emails and stuff like that. So all of this is free. I would highly recommend people check this out. Like the session replay is I think by far the coolest thing. And again, what better way to know how people are interacting with your site, whether it's for tracking errors or just like research of how they're interacting with it, than be able to see like a scrubbable video. And you can see all the interactions and things over here. So there's lots of really cool stuff inside of Highlight. I think adding any sort of tooling and dashboard and alerting system on top of just your basic logs is essential for anything that you actually wanna monitor. For me, I was just kind of waiting around for someone to tell me that something in the Discord bot broke before I then, then went and did research and tried to look into the logs to figure out what happened. That's not the way that you really wanna do this. So as I've, as I've worked on this bot more, my process for handling and finding and tracking errors has gotten more and more sophisticated. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any additional tips for tracking and handling errors inside of JavaScript, whether it be front end or back end, uh, let us know in the comments below. I'd love to kind of build up a little list of tips and maybe we can do a part two if you wanna see other topics in this realm uh, covered on another video in the future. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.